Welcome to Time Alone with God, devotional podcast brought to you by Eden Stream Ministries. I'm Sylvia Bonchara, and today's devotion is entitled, How Christ Dwells in Us. But before we begin, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful this day for the opportunity to spend time on this day. As we look into the word, we ask that you will be with us and guide us and enable us to know about the power of Christ dwelling within us. Thank you, Lord, for this precious gift, for it is in Jesus' name that we pray and believe. Amen. I hope you've been having a good week. Today we want to read our key text. Our key text begins at uh, Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. And this is what it reads. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Friends, there is power in having Christ in your life. And I can give no explanation except, except an example found in the Word of God about this power. This wonderful power that can change lives. This wonderful power that can bring peace. This wonderful power by simply accepting Christ in our lives. This wonderful, wonderful power. The example I'm going to speak about today is the Apostle Peter. Everyone knows Peter. Peter was the guy you could spot out in a crowd. He was loud. He was vivacious. He was full of life. He was the life of the party. Everyone liked to be around Peter. But Peter was also impatient. Peter was also quick tempered. Peter made promises sometimes he couldn't keep. Luke chapter 22, verse 54 to verse 62 gives us a small account of what Peter's character was like. It reads Then took they him, that is Christ, and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall, and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire, and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him, and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And after a space of one hour, after another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he spa yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me peace. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. That was a sad night for Peter. Peter before had sworn to his Lord that he would never leave him, that he would die by his side. And yet when the moment came, he was overcome. He denied Christ not only once, not twice, but three times. And as the cock crew and they, their eyes met across the hall, Peter remembered the words of his Lord. And he knew that he had fallen and it touched him. At that time, Peter knew of Christ. He had spent three and a half years almost with Christ. He had walked with him. They had talked. They had done things together. But he only knew of Christ. He didn't know Christ. And so from that experience and going forward, Peter realized that there had to be a change. He, not, he needed to know more than just about Christ. He needed to have Christ dwelling. And so after Christ was crucified and he arose and went to heaven, Peter and the disciples were meeting in the upper room, earnestly praying, praying for this comforter that Christ had promised them. And as you read in the book of Acts, from the first four chapters, you will realize that after a while, the Spirit did fall on these 12 apostles, including Peter. And they began to witness with a power and a passion that they hadn't had before. And they were able to do miracles. Acts chapter 4 and verse 13 tells us an account of how after being able to do these wonderful things, they were summoned by the high priest's 
by the members of the Sanhedrin to know what this was that they were preaching about. Let's read Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Those are wonderful words. They had been with Jesus. Peter had changed from knowing about Jesus, from knowing of Jesus, to having been a witness, to having been with Jesus. The power of the Spirit had filled his life. And so now he was able to boldly preach, boldly go out and do the work of God because he had the power of Christ dwelling in him. Friends, we're coming soon to the close of time. Soon time will run out. And between before that time, do you have the power of Christ in you to finish the work that he has given us? Christ asked us as he was descending, he asked his disciples, and by extension, he asked us as he was descending up into the heaven to go out and preach the word, to tell those who had not heard about him, to baptize people and bring them into the fold. Are we doing that work? Do we have the courage to do it or are we fearful? Things are happening around us. Events are rapidly fulfilling, showing that the time is ending. Are we out there doing what we're supposed to do? Or are we comfortably seated, talking about a Christ we have no knowledge of, except book knowledge? We have no experience of, except that which we hear of others. Do you have a personal experience of Christ? Does Christ actually dwell within your heart? It's not too late. Time hasn't run out completely. We too, like Peter, can have that power. We too, like Peter, can be bold, can be fearless, knowing that we have Christ in our hearts. I invite you today not to know about Christ, not to know of Christ, but to have Christ within you, that you may be able to stand up and boldly speak about his love and his grace and the fact that he died for the sin. All you have to do is ask Christ, invite Christ into your heart. That's all we need, to invite Christ into our heart. And he has promised that if we do that, he will do his part. He will energize us and give us power and victory over our sin and enable us to go out there and preach in his name. It sounds like that were things for a long time ago. Maybe that doesn't apply to me, but we think it. But so long as we bear the name of Christ, so long as we claim to be Christ's followers, then it is our duty to go out there and preach his name, to hasten the work until his kingdom shall come. And so at this moment, take time, reflect, reflect upon your life and ask yourself, do I have the power of Christ dwelling in me? Am I bold and fearless to go out and do that which I need to do in order for the gospel to reach those who are hungry and thirsty for the word? If you do not have that power, Ask Christ and he shall freely give it to you. And if you have that power and it has somehow become dormant in your life, ask God and he shall freely, freely give it to you. He shall energize you and embolden you to go out there. It's not hard, friends. It's not hard to tell someone about the love of Jesus. Just one person is all we need to start with. One person. You do not know the effect telling that one person about the love of Christ. I pray, friends, that each of us will reach out to that longing soul, that soul that longs to hear the voice of Jesus in life. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to have life this morning. We thank you for the fact that you have seen it fit that we should see another day. All praise and glory and honor we give to you. Dear God, we ask that now as we start this day, as we go about this day, that you give us the energy and the ability to go out there and tell people of the love that you had for us, that you gave your only son, Jesus Christ, to die for us on the cross. Lord, we need a power that will enable us to be fearless, to be bold, and also Peter. And so we pray that your spirit may dwell in us, that we need not fear our, fear our fellow men, but we work together. Go out there, preaching in the word, that those who are lost and seeking and 
unable to find the that they may help guide them to you. For those who have known you and gone out of the fold, Lord, we ask that you would give us tact and grace that we might be able to bring them back into your fold. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for hearing our prayer. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.